and take it. I'm live. To Believer Central World Update. What a day. Oh my gosh. We have got so much to talk about. We better get started. This is only a two hour show. <laughs> you know, I was laughing. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, you know, mess up my intro while I'm sitting here laughing. <laughs> but I was reading something here. I it, I just can't help it. Okay. <laughs> A 21-year-old Texan tried to cash a check at a Fort Worth bank for $360 billion. (laughs) He was arrested for forgery, okay? He said his girlfriend's mother gave it to him. That's brilliant. You know what? I wish I would have thought of it back when I was trying to get rid of some guys that liked my daughter's. You know, and you just never know who that's going to work on, okay? But seriously, I mean, they call the cops, but no wonder she wanted to get, I think she wanted to get rid of him, <laughs> give him a check for $360 billion, and he's dumb enough to go to a bank and, and try to cash it. Public school, <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what can I say? What can I say? I just never, ever <laughs> have ceased. I've never ceased to be amazed, you know. Now, I've got something to report to you that is just ridiculous. Um, but concerning. Not, you know, not, not like the guy who tried to cash the $360 billion check. Um President Obama declares the future must not belong to practicing Christians. Well, dang, that's really funny considering he tells everyone here he's a Christian. Future must not belong to practicing Christians. Let's see what this article says. In his speech to the United Nations General Assembly today, the President of the United States declared that the future does not belong to practicing Christians. Already, the media and the left are in full denial probably based on their general lack of understanding of theology. This would have been a gaffe had Mitt Romney said it, but with Barack Obama, he's just speaking bold truths. His bold truth declares that the future does not belong to practicing Christians. Really? Well, I have news for Mr. Obama. The future belongs to only 
practicing Christians. Okay? Not religious people. That's not what I said. Those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and obey his word. That's who the future belongs to. That who is who is going to populate the coming earth during the millennium after the cataclysm. So, you know, <laughs> it's those who don't know Jesus Christ who aren't going to be around for their opinions to even matter. Let's start talking about all, all this news goodness. Um, some of these things we went through in the Prophecy Nutshell that we've been producing and loading, uploading on YouTube each night. Well, it's ended up being real early morning um, because there's just so much and I'm trying to get you know, I'm trying to go as far as I can to get you up to the date, you know, up to the minute information as best as I can. And um, <laughs> there's so much of it that it I can't do it all anymore in 24, you know, in 24 hours. I have to sleep two or three of those in there somewhere. <laughs> and there's just so much happening that... There's just no way to keep it up completely. Uh, there's, But I'm going to, what I try to do is assimilate all this information and then give you the high points of, you know, the, the things that stand out to me as most prophetically significant and important for us to know uh, as we wait for the king to return for us. Um the USDA has declared 1,452 counties as disaster areas. The, the drought, the famine, third seal judgment, well on its way. First six months is the warmest ever recorded here in America. We've got some weird, you know, that means we're going to have some weird weather coming up behind it now. Uh, we've got fish kills in 25 lakes. This is just this year, okay? We're just... What I'm doing is I'm going over just a few of the signs for you from just this year, okay? And there's so many, you just will be astounded. Um, snow in South Africa, sinkholes appearing all over the world, Louisiana, Guatemala, Brooklyn, you know, they're everywhere. Flooding, uh, or ta and Taiwan, you know, a sinkhole appeared and swallowed a guy. Um, it just and then almost swallowed the reporter who was reporting about the guy being swallowed. You know, another section gave way. So, what's happening is things are moving under our feet. Okay, this increased solar activity is actually doing kind of what the they showed in the movie 2012, where the you know this increased solar activity is emitting neutrinos, which affect the um, mantle underneath our crust more than it affects our crust. It just kind of goes through the crust and affects what's underneath. It's heating everything up and liquefying um, to a point to where everything's starting to move and slide. Well, we've got, you know, earth crust displacement coming. We know that because once these events are over and we return to the earth to live here again it's all one continent again so obviously things have been moving around during the tribulation period and in the time um after the rapture but i think you know we're seeing some a lot of movement now as well because you know we've got earthquakes swarms of earthquakes, okay? Nothing really big to kind of freak the planet out, but just thousands of little bitty tiny ones, but they're swarming all over the place. Very weird, weird stuff. Flooding all over the world, Philippines, Taiwan, India, China, you know, they're getting our rain over there while we're in drought over here in the United States. Um... Some more. Greenland melted in four days. Seriously. 
It sounds nuts. It just sounds it sounds like it can't be true, but it is. Greenland melted in four days. Half the polar ice cap has melted or broken off since 1980. Half. Okay? Uh, I know some of these things I've been mentioning to you recently that well over 100 volcanoes are erupting on the planet. Well over 100. 30 is about normal. And I know that sounds excessive, but it is pretty normal. Wildfires. Half of the United States, it looked like, was on fire at one point earlier in the summer. Um, We've got this increased solar activity that we're having flares. You know, um, you have, I think it's C-class and M-class and then X-class. And a lot of M-class. Not not really a whole lot of X-class, although we have had several of those this year. We've got blood red waters in China, Lebanon, France. Seven bodies of water now have turned blood red. We need to be paying attention here. God is showing us that the time has come and that we need to be ready to evacuate. Um, we've seen a steady morality decline and apostasy. Um, the apostasy ended up being an actual event as well as a gradual uh, deterioration. As in August 2010, we saw four of the biggest religious denominations of Christianity fall from grace as they compromise to a peace society. Okay? Come out of all these false denominations and religions into just the pure religion that the scripture tells us to care for widows and orphans and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's pure religion according to the scriptures. Okay? Um, These earthquake swarms. California, Alaska, um, Costa Rica, Central America, South America, the British Virgin Islands, and then uh, just in the island groups there were Indonesia, Philippines, Australia, New Zealand, all of those are located. You have these quake swarms that are going nuts. I mean, now they're all real little bitty ones. You know, they'll, you'll have a thousand. I mean, California had a thousand quakes in four day period of time, but they were so small that they can't. You, you can't feel them. Now, what that means is that, you know, all of this movement is occurring really, really subtly under our feet. But at some point here, it's going to just jolt us as we have this pole shift. Now, our poles are off by 20 degrees, but before they're off by 40 degrees, it'll flip violently. Now, that doesn't mean it'll turn our planet upside down. Well, we're stationary. What it means is it's going to, you're going to have earth crust displacement, like in the movie. <laughs> that was real science, little did I know um, at the time. I, did, I thought they were just making it up for the movie, but it is real science that these neutrinos, um, start heating up the core of the earth and everything starts becoming more fluid. All this magma rising to the surface. That's why we've got a river boiling in uh, Russia. Famines. We're in dire straits on this planet, famine-wise. Like we said in the very beginning, you've got 1,452 counties in America's breadbasket that have been declared disaster areas. We're not going to have food production, <laughs> not much of it for next year. Um, they're already saying that this is going to hit really, really hard within a year. And that's not very long, okay? You're already seeing food prices going through the roof. People are slaughtering their animals all over the world rather than feeding them because this price of the feed has gone through the roof. And these agricultural specialists and commodity specialists have been saying that, you know, this is serious, okay? They're saying that just that one, just that one move of, the, of people slaughtering their animals 
rather than feeding them because they can't afford to feed them, is going to increase food prices 14% all by itself. The scripture tells us that in the last days, food is going to be scarce. Let's look at those scriptures real quick. I te- you know, I know the scriptures, so I tend to, to quote them to you rather than just put the scriptures up for you and give you the references. I'll try to do better about giving you, you know, stopping to look for the scriptures and giving you the references so you can look them up for yourself. Um, I know precisely what I'm looking for here, so it shouldn't take me but a second. Uh, it's the one I'm thinking, measure of wheat for a penny and a measure of barley. Well, let me look and see if I'm remembering right. And I will give you that scripture. Yes. Revelation 6.6. 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Um, what that's saying is the, the rich are going to get richer. The poor are going to get poorer. There's not going to be any more middle class. There's going to be the super rich elite, and then everybody else is just drones. Okay? And poor. And it's going to take, it says, um, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Let me um, bring up the scripture that shows us the famine, the third seal judgment. That would be Revelation chapter 6. Okay. Let's back up by one verse. Okay. And when he had opened the third seal, this is uh, Revelation... Chapter 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And then, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now what that means, a penny is talking about a day's wage there. Okay? It's not talking about... Um, this is a famine, okay? It's This is saying, and it does say in other areas of the scripture as well, that it'll take your whole day's wage just to feed yourself and your family. I, I, hopefully that means your family too. But, you know, you've heard these songs about these times coming where, uh, you know, I wish we'd all been ready. It says a piece of bread would buy a bag of gold during that time. There's... Food is going to be scarce, and many, many, many people are going to be affected by it. pestilences coming. <coughs> Excuse me. Pestilences. That's disease. Um, locusts, flies, lice, frogs, crickets. I mean, pestilences. Okay, you're talking about things that, well, the root word is pest. Let's go with that. Signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth, distress of nations, seas, and the waves roaring. That sounds like a pulse shift, doesn't it? But we do have signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. We've got this NASA SOHO satellite that's pointed at the sun all the time and is showing these coronal mass ejections and these flares that come off of the sun, and they have even spotted um, something, something huge, like 
the size of Jupiter. Um, it was solid black sphere of some kind that pulled up next to the sun, released a tether that came out of it and attached itself to our sun. And it stayed there for 80 hours. This was March 8th through 11th of this year. And as this thing detached, our sun registered an energy decrease. This, whatever this was, used our sun as a gas tank. <laughs> As a gas station, just pulled up, hooked in, filled up, and took off. Okay? So, take that for whatever you will. I'm just saying signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And, you know, how do you explain something like that? We have no idea what it is, but we know that God is in control of it, whatever it is. Because he's got his methods of accomplishing what he's doing. And, you know, we're not going to have a need for the sun anymore when things are renewed. And so... It, there's no need for it, so it's being destroyed. And um, that's part of God's plan, so don't fear that. Uh, he's got it under control, and everything's going to be all right, and what he's replacing it with is even better. So, you know, don't lament for the sun. It's served its purpose, and now we'll move on to bigger and better things, won't we? It wasn't ever meant to last forever, okay? Um Great signs in the sky. I was talking on the nutshell about how this technology that they've got now that uses holographics and lasers. And they can put anything in the sky with this technology. They can put Jesus in the sky to where you think you see Jesus in the sky. They can put UFOs in the sky, the Virgin Mary in the sky, I anything they can put up there. I mean, they can paint you any kind of picture they want and put up there. It's amazing. Amazing, seriously. Um, after seeing what that technology is capable of, I'm never going to believe anything I see in the sky again. Okay? Unless it rolls open like a scroll and the king is here to pick us up. Then, uh, then you know. <laughs> but don't believe any of this bull. These... Um, Two reporters for the Excelsior newspaper in Mexico City got out there with infrared photography, and they were able to spot the lasers and pinpoint where these these images were coming from that were being projected. That people are like, "Oh, it's oh, you know, it's an angel. What is it? It's a UFO." And they thought it was hilarious. Okay, the people that that are uh, doing this, they think it's hilarious. It, it, they're, they just love to make suckers out of all of us. So, <laughs> I'm never going to believe anything I see up there. There's no UFOs, okay? It's all a, an illusion, a deception. There are fallen angels out there, but there aren't aliens out there. Not that are ever going to contact us. You know, God can do many, many things in many, many places. But if, if, they, if aliens were ever going to contact us, he would have. He would have warned us in the scriptures, and he didn't. He says fallen angels are out there. And so, if we believe the word of God, then we have the truth. But he's already told us that these times we're living in now, the deception is so great that even the very elect would be deceived if that were possible. He does not allow it, okay? He brought me to a point where I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to be deceived, Show me any deception in my life so I can get rid of it. <laughs> wow, what a question. I didn't had no clue he was going to show me that my church was a fake, my Bible was fake. You know, he set my path. He set my feet on the path of knowledge because I thought, oh my gosh. It had never even occurred to me that my Bible was a fake. I had an NASB and I listened to the NIV on on cassette. It never even occurred to me in a million years that my Bible could be a fake. It was. He was right. Because I did the research myself. The KJV is the only pure text in English. And the, so that's the only thing. I I had to go buy one. 
<laughs> so now it's the only thing I use. I don't I don't listen to or read anything else because I don't I want that pure text in my brain. And I don't want I don't use these uh, you know I don't even use these other bibles as reference tools. I just threw them in the trash can where they belong because um I want the pure word in here. I was in total distress, you know, when I first discovered this because I had huge chunks of the NI, uh, NIV and NASB memorized. And um, I was panic stricken when I first started listening to the KJV because I didn't even recognize it. It was like I'd never heard it before. I know. <laughs> it's. I urge you to get in the get in the KJV. No, but that's something the Spirit has to lead you to do. If that's something you don't feel like, you know, the Lord's leading you to do, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> animal attacks. I want to explain something to you about animal attacks during these last times when... Um, because it says in Revelation 6, 8, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his, name that, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Okay, now in the book of Genesis, I want to take you there real quick. And so I can explain to you what the deal is about these animal attacks that are coming. Because you've got a decree from the king in Genesis, which gives us dominion over all the beasts of the earth. Okay? And that dominion is retracted. Um, that, which sounds kind of scary, doesn't it? It sounds scary to me, too. Okay, in Genesis 9-2, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea and into your hand are they delivered. That is why animals fear people. That's why squirrels won't just come right up to you unless they've been trained to do something. They'll take off. Raccoons, chipmunks, mice. I mean, everything. All the beasts of the earth have a dread put upon them of us to where they fear us. They don't bother us. We have dominion. And God purposely gave us that dominion in Genesis 9-2. But it's retracted in Genesis, I mean in Revelation chapter 6. Now, after the believers and the children are evacuated, then these judgments begin to happen. I know it's going to be a really scary environment, but please remember that if you find yourself left behind, fall to your knees immediately and repent and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell him, my king, I give you full control of my life. That's what I do. And as long as he's running it, I don't have to worry about messing it all up. <laughs> um, so anyway, that... I. I didn't know if you knew that about the animals or not, but these animals will turn and attack people when this dread given to us in Genesis 9-2 is retracted. So what will happen is you'll instead of the way things are now, insects, mice, squirrels, rabbits, raccoons, you know, insects, birds, fish, all of these things, everything that moveth upon the earth, it says. The dread is removed from them, and instead of fearing us like they always have, they will attack us. Yeah, that's what this is saying. 
What this means is that during the tribulation period, mice are going to be hunting you down to hurt you. <laughs> Roly polies are going to hunt you down to hurt you. Okay, I, I don't know if they can, but you know what I'm saying? Really harmless things that that really uh, don't bother us, and we're not even afraid of them because they're not harmful to us. They are going to be trying to hurt people. <laughs> You're going to have squirrels attacking people, dogs, cats attacking people, attacking their owners. Um, it's like a huge animal rebellion happens because the dread God has put on them of us is lifted. It's going to really be miserable. Wars and rumors of wars, well, we see that. And that's something we're going to have to talk about. I haven't, I've, I've, I haven't done the news first this time. I'm, I'm going to, you know, give you the latest news here as we keep moving. But it's heavy, okay? Just kind of, let's get our joy and <laughs> learn a few things first before we tackle some of these events. Because it, it's getting, it's getting... Um, to a point where, you know, w we may find ourselves being martyred for the Lord <laughs> if he doesn't uh, come really, really soon. But, you know what, it doesn't matter. Even if we die, as soon as he shows up, we're resurrected again and you're back alive again on the earth in your body. So don't sweat it if you die, okay? Or for those who have died trusting in Jesus because they'll be back, you know, in their body just like I'm in mine and you're in yours. You know, if I die, I'll be right back as soon as he, as soon as he comes. So um, it kind of takes the fear out of death, doesn't it? I mean, what's the fear? You're going to be right back. Um, an increased knowledge and methods of travel is one of the signs of our generation being the prophetic generation. And as you, I've pointed out um, in several times when I teach that mankind didn't evolve for 5,900 years. And then all of a sudden... Boom! We have, you know, we're, we're traveling for 5,900 years by wooden ships and horses and wagons, right? Well, <laughs> in a hundred years, just in the last hundred years, we've gone from horses and wagons and wooden ships to aircraft carriers and space shuttles. You tell me. Man did not evolve on his own. Fallen angels have come here and shared technology is what's happened. Okay? Obviously. You know, it, it, if they were a member of the <laughs> Federation, like the Star Trek series portrays, they would have violated the Prime Directive. Okay? Because they gave us technology, now we're killing each other with it. They, they're in trouble. Okay? Um... But think about it. I mean, just in the last hundred years, mankind has just gone through the roof technology-wise. And, and I'll tell you the truth on this. The government's technology is about 50 years ahead of ours. You think what we got is tricky neat. You haven't seen nothing yet. Just wait till the Antichrist shows up. You'll be astounded by the technology that man has acquired through their compromise with fallen angels it's it's terrible it advanced methods of travel you know you, you keep, thank god we have cars you know i'm i'm really glad <laughs> people you know a hundred years ago or you know a little over now i guess had to do the horse and wagon thing you know i'm about 20 miles uh from the city and Wow, I can't imagine riding a horse 20 miles to go get a loaf of bread. Uh-uh. They didn't do it. They made their own bread, you know? People are going to have to be become more self-sufficient as things change. Um, 
And if you don't have any basic supplies, a couple of weeks worth of food, a couple of weeks worth of water, you know, flashlights, blankets, candles, your medicines, just your, your basic things that you can't live without, um, you need to have a couple of weeks worth of those prepared so in the event of any kind of emergency, okay? It, it doesn't, there doesn't even have to be some giant cataclysm for you to need these supplies. All that has to happen is for a storm to come through and the power to go out. You'll need your supplies, okay? So just be wise. Make sure you have bottled water. And I know water can come into your house without electricity, but they can't pump it to you from the station without electricity. So unless they have electricity, you're not getting water, <laughs> okay? If the power goes out, you need to be prepared to be self-sufficient for a couple of weeks. So get yourself, you know, a couple of weeks worth of bottled water and some non-perishable foods and, you know, a first aid kit. Make yourself, you know, get a list. You can go online and they've got, uh, they'll, they'll give you a whole list of everything that you need to put in it. And uh, just, just to be prudent, you know, I mean, um, maybe you won't ever need it. You know, we plan on leaving, don't we? The rapture saints. Maybe we won't. Maybe we won't ever need it. But if we do, then they're there, and you've got some comfort in that. Because if the time ever comes when you really are going to need them bad, and you don't have them, and you and you haven't prepared, then you're going to find yourself feeling extremely desperate. What do I do now? And it's and remember, you know, it's those who don't prepare that end up, you know, stealing supplies from other people by force out of their desperation to survive because they haven't prepared themselves. You know? So, just... Do yourself a favor and get yourself some basic preparations. And, you know, if you never need them, great. But if you do, and, I mean, we've had to use ours before. We had the, we had the uh, power go off for, what, two weeks? Almost two weeks after an ice storm? So, I mean, these, you know, the world doesn't have to <laughs> be coming to an end for you to need these supplies. Just be prudent, you know. Make sure you've got what you need. Um, I guess we're ready to go through some of the news. How about it? Um, I haven't been queued for any breaks, so I guess we're going to keep on going until I am. <laughs> ah, thank you, my king, for Cold, clean, wonderful water. Mwah. You know, I, I've said before, every time I pick up a really awesome, clean, cold, wonderful bottle of water, I think about how they'll, they'll be willing to kill you for it in the tribulation period. Because you've got all the blood, or, you've got all the, all the blood, all the, blah, blah, blah. I've got all the, all the, you know, water is turning blood red, turning to blood. And there won't be any wonderful, clean, pure, cold water. And I'm so thankful for it. Yay. So I, I think about that every time I hold one in my hand because I'm so thankful for it. And I know already from knowing the scriptures that during the tribulation period, someone would kill you for this. It will be so rare. People be drinking out of mud holes and things like that and pulling water out of their radiators. When you've got the, all of the fresh water turned to blood, oh my gosh. But you know what? If you're a believer, I wanted to tell you this about the animal and the insect attacks and stuff like that too. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you find yourself still here after the rapture, you get to your knees and you give the king your life. And ask him to forgive you and save you. And he will. His Holy Spirit will come in and dwell inside you. But you better mean it. I mean, don't go messing around with the king after the rapture. Okay? The rapture 
showed you he meant business. And if you're still here, don't go trying to make excuses to him. Okay? Don't even think about it. Don't don't even think about it. Just get on your knees, tell him you're sorry, and ask him to forgive you and save your own life. Okay? Save your life. Have the smarts to save your life and get on your knees before the king. And you know what? He's good. He loves you. He's not some tyrant who's demanding you bow. He, You know, we're on our way to hell all on our own. He doesn't even have to send us. He's coming to rescue us, not to condemn us. You know? The world wants you to believe that God is sitting on his throne with his big lightning rod ready to just strike us all and laugh himself to death while he does it. No, he's not. He's loving and kind and wonderful. He is. I adore him. He's awesome. I can't spend enough time with him. I mean, I I spend time with him a lot, and I just can't get enough of him. I mean, he's just, well, I could sit here and I just sound like a, you know, I just sound like a schoolgirl with a crush probably because he's so amazing that I'm just awestruck by him. I mean, I, I'm completely awed by him every time, every day. I'm awed by him. He's, I love you, Lord. He's just so amazing. I can hardly wait to just fall at his feet and worship him and tell him thank you for dying for me because he didn't have to do that. I'm so glad he did. Oh my goodness, if he hadn't, my babies. My babies would be lost. My grandbabies would be lost. I can't. I owe him everything. I, I give him my whole life and it's never going to be enough to to thank him for what he's done for me. I, I'll, sit, I'll start crying if I keep going there. So I'm going to go a different direction. Um, oh, Ahmed, the live terrorist. Yeah, he's here. At the UN, spewing his venom, saying Israel's a fake regime that will be eliminated. The White House condemned his marks. Um, Ban Ki moon, the Secretary General, told him before his speech to tone down the rhetoric. But, of course, he doesn't listen to anyone. He does everything his own way because he feels like he should uh, just be able to rule the world. Well, he just wants to get rid of Israel, and since he feels that way, I don't care about anything he has to say. If anybody who is going to be against Israel or want to destroy Israel, I got, I got no use for them. I, you know, I feel bad for them that they're deceived, but um, I'm not going to cater to them, you know. Those who bless Israel be blessed, and those who curse Israel be will be cursed, and and that's just reality. You can either get with the program and get you some of those blessings by blessing Israel, or you can mess yourself up and uh, cheat yourself out of it by just deciding to to be angry and hateful toward them. Now, I mean, I hope you get you know a whole heck of a lot of satisfaction about being angry and hateful toward them because you're not going to get any blessings from it. You're going to have to have all your, all your satisfaction is going to have to come from your hatred and anger if you don't want the blessings. What can I say? Um, the situation in China is, is getting really quite scary because... Um, Oh, man. They've got an aircraft carrier now. China has, that is, that they have sent over there. And I know, you know, the news is, the news is playing it down, saying, oh, it's, a, it's an old decommissioned, retired, um, you know, thing. Well, really? It's an aircraft carrier, people. <laughs> how, how can you, how can you, you know, if you listen to these, news sources that are only want to deceive you and water everything down. You know, there it's like people believe them. You hear that there's an aircraft carrier over there, but then the news will go, 
oh, well, it's a decommissioned. It's, it doesn't even have any planes or anything. Really? And you're going to believe that bull? <laughs> what are they, what would China, what's China doing taking it out there then? Are they going to just sit there and, and use it for decoration? Is that what you think? I mean, if you believe that, if you believe that bull, you know, then I guess, you know, you believe it, but. It, it's just too ridiculous to me to believe. China, yeah, they're going to, they prepare for combat. They bring up their forces. They mean business. And they're going to float over to Japan on a decommissioned aircraft carrier that has no planes on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you believe that, then you better run from people who are selling swampland in Florida and bridges in California. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy what they expect us to believe. But, like Adolf Hitler said, the bigger the lie, the more likely the people are to believe it. Isn't that nuts? And it, when an aircraft carrier shows up after someone has said, after, after Chinese general says prepare for combat and calls all of his troops to be combat ready. And then you hear of an aircraft carrier that is, has entered the area over there. And somebody tells you it's some broken down decommissioned, you know, floating barge that has no planes and intends to do nothing. They're taking you for a sucker. Why would they do that? Why, why would they do that? They're coming over there to conquer. That's what they're doing. I mean, you kind of need to take that as reality when their commander over this 200 million man army tells them, okay, prepare for combat. Calls all those troops up to be ready for combat. Well, (laughs) they're not going to float... You know, they're not going to float out there on an aircraft carrier with no planes and just sit there and watch. They're, you know, unless they plan to sink it right there to, you know, for some reason. But I I can't really see that happening. What you what you need to realize is China is going over there to kick some. To kick some to kick some. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) They're going over there to conquer, and this is going to get this is going to get real interesting real fast when it starts happening because we don't know yet whether the U.S. What do you want to bet the U.S. pulls out and leaves Japan as a sitting duck? That's the trend. That's the way this president does things. Unfortunately. Um, So, well, they had kind of a water cannon fight with the Taiwanese over there. They both shot... (laughs) They shot water cannons at each other and then soaked each other down and then went their their ways. Now, if 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 only all wars could be that simple. You know? Whoever got the wettest lost, everybody goes home. Come back next year. Try it again, you know. Um, This is getting really serious with this Chinese situation, though. Um, We're going to watch that closely for you. Let me see. I'm going to check the site here and see if there's anything else I can tell you about that. About the Chinese conflict here. Anything new while I've got you here. Okay, I guess that's the best we can do for right now. Um, anyway, we're gonna keep an we're gonna keep an eye on that situation for you and let you know um, what's going on as soon as possible. I'm sorry, guys. I've got on such a roll. I haven't even come over and said hi to you. I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. Hi, Paige. Hi, Anon32. Is that 
84. I actually have to put my glasses on to see these things over here. Joni and David and Janine and Paige and Glenn. Wow. And Michelle and Joan. Oh, look at all you guys. Wow. I didn't realize all you guys were over here. And there's Sherry. She hasn't been around for a while. It's so good to see you guys. Oh, you need prayer today? Okay, well, let's just pray for Sherry. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we all come together in our love for you and your mighty name, my King, and ask that you would pour your spirit and your mercy and your blessings and great grace, O King, upon your servant, Sherry, and bless all those in the chat room, I pray, and all those who are watching. Grant them understanding, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi. Hey, Joan. Oh, hi, Kim. I am so glad to see all you guys. I, is Do you have any questions, or does anybody else need prayer? Are, well, Sherry, is there anything I can do to help you, sweetheart? Terrilyn. Hi. Nice to see you. What can I do for you, dear? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Good. He belongs in prison. I'm not going to read you what she's saying here because it's it's just too terrible. And this is her her life here. And so I'm not going to make that public. Um. Sherry, honey, and you're and you're having a hard time with it today. Just kind of creeping up on you today, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would cover our sister Sherry with great comfort and great peace that surpasseth all understanding. Oh, Lord, cover her in your grace and your mighty spirit. Pour yourself out upon her and comfort her. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, sweetheart, I'm so sorry that that you've had these things happen to you. And... I understand it was a long time ago, but, you know, I understand what really traumatic things, they don't go away. They stick around. And, you know, sometimes it feels like the offense was yesterday, even though it's, you know, 25 years ago that she's talking about here. I I totally understand. It's like a post-traumatic stress thing that... It will come back and make you feel like it's the end of the world all of a sudden. Precious, quote the scripture, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You're under attack. I can help you there. In the name of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I bind these spirits that are attacking our sister Sherry. I command you to loose your hold on her and be cast into the pit in the name of the Most High God, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I will not rejoice, as the scripture says, that the spirits are subject unto me, but that my name is written in heaven. In Jesus' name, Sherry, be covered with comfort and peace. Father, place a hedge of protection around her, we pray. In Jesus' name. And, you know, this, I, I was sitting here thinking about what all of this is for. There's more. There's more of you out there that are suffering right now than just her. That's why this is happening. That's why we're, that's why we're being led to pray and bind these spirits in the name of Jesus Christ and cast them into the pit. And we are going to, we're not going to put up with them. We're going to hug you. And rain comfort on you. We're going to pour the on the oil and the wine. And take care of you and hug you and love you. And everything's going to be okay, sister. Everything's going to be all right. You hang in there. And you know what? If you, uh, if you need me, you get a hold of me. Okay? You know how to do that. And I think I... I think I gave you my cell phone number, didn't I? To where you can reach me if you need to. You, and night or day, okay? And we'll we'll talk you through it, and it'll be okay. All right. Night or day, I mean that. If you're in if you're in distress, you you talk to me, and and we'll lift your spirit, and we'll bind those wicked spirits, and give you some peace and put some protection around you in Jesus name he's so good you know I just he's so amazing he divine appointments divine appointments we're about to go to a break stick around we'll be right back
Glory to God in the highest. Welcome to Believer Central World Update on Christians United Broadcasting Network. If you are hurting, I th- I'm suspecting that this situation with our sister here in the chat room is a leading of the spirit because someone out there who's watching or will watch the recording, I have no idea um, who it will be, but someone out there, it, the Lord is speaking to them. And he let his servant Sherry... You know, I guess um, this terrible person who has hurt her so many years ago, um, they called saying that he was wanting to get out of prison and his crime was heinous against her and her child. So um, those kind of things, when they call you like that, it, it brings up all of these old feelings of fear and anger and vulnerability and and abuse it's just horrible but our sister has the blood of the king applied to her life so she's going to be okay and we're going to bind those spirits in the name of Jesus we're going to place protection around you in the name of Jesus and you reach out if this if if this spirit is if the spirit of the lord is speaking to you through these things and you have been hurt and you're in despair and you just can't grasp your joy and pull yourself out of it you're being oppressed by wicked spirits they they don't want to allow that for you So in the name of Jesus, right now, and by his authority, I mean, I've never tried this on television, but I mean, there's no reason why it wouldn't work because it works all the time. Uh, You know, when someone will contact me from halfway around the world and say, wicked spirits are in my house and tormenting me, help, and, and I can cast them out from right here where I sit halfway around the world. It's not, um... (laughs) You know, like the centurion told Jesus, you know, just say the word. And he's given us that authority. All we have to do is say the word, and we can bind spirits halfway across the world. So this is for you. If You're going to know it's for you if it is. You know, you'll feel it. That's for me. The Lord's, the Lord's doing this for me. He's speaking to me. In the name of Jesus, you reach out and claim this for yourself. Okay? This is kind of a blanket thing, and I, I've never done this before, but I'll, I'll follow the Spirit's leading. And by the authority given me by Jesus Christ, and in His name, I come against the wicked spirits that are tormenting and holding captive those who will reach out with their faith today to be set free. I bind them on every single person out there who will reach out. Reach your hand out. Just reach your hand toward the screen. It's only, I mean, it's it's a sign of your faith that you want it for yourself. Just reach out. You don't have to touch the screen or anything. Just, just a, It's a symbolic thing. Just reach out. You're telling God as you reach your hand out that that's for me. That I want that for me. That's mine. And you claim that word for yourself, and those wicked spirits, by the word and the authority that's been spoken, have they, they are bound. And by his mighty authority and in his name, I cast those bound spirits into the pit and off of you in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command that healing and comfort and peace reign upon you by the grace of the King in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. (sighs) It's working because I can feel the spirit stir. I always cry when he he stirs within me like that because there's power 
that flows and it's real it's it's overwhelming sometimes because it's so strong but reach out and take it for yourself set yourself free by the name of the lord and set yourself free by his wonderful grace and mercy and by his power it's not not by might not by power but my by my spirit saith the lord it's his spirit that binds these things and that can cast them out and he's given us authority to speak that power and to wield it if we can wield it responsibly and so if you have claimed that for yourself then you are free and you just start thanking the king and praising him and you will feel peace and comfort right just cover you like a blanket and give you peace of mind and body and spirit in Jesus name oh i love you guys too you felt a release praise the lord i'm not surprised i mean he that's how he always does things but this is this is actually making this is a move of the spirit where he is setting people free from really deep long time hurts that would come back to plague us and steal our joy because the joy of the lord is our strength and if they can suck the joy out of us then they suck the strength out of us and we can't allow them to do that god has given us the god has given us authority and given us the power and given us the tools that we need to overcome evil with good do not return evil for evil but overcome evil with good love people and because god is love if you love people then god is involved okay and he can do great things he can do such great things oh praise the lord i love you too i love you too oh my goodness <sighs> wow <laughs> I need, I need just a minute. Okay, uh, I won't be gone long. I promise. I just need a minute, just, just one minute. Okay. Okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I get, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you got me figured out there, <laughs> you got me figured out there, Janine, yeah, I just didn't want to, you know, have to blow my nose on the air, <laughs> I'd rather not do that to you, <laughs> but I get, you know, I'm, I got some, <laughs> got some flow going on here, so, you know, praise the king. Oh, I don't you just love him? He is so awesome. He just loves us and he's he cares, you know. He's, you know, we don't, God's love is not something we have to compete for or fight for or strive for. It's ours. It's already ours. He laid down his life to prove that he loves me. So I'm going to believe. How, how can you not believe him with such a passionate gesture? He laid his life down for you. For you. Personally. And me. Personally. He's proved himself. 
And, you know, it feels really good to me to have someone who loves me unconditionally. Because love here is conditional, isn't it? It's conditional on whether or not we do what people want us to do, isn't it? But you know what? God loves us. And he came and died for us. And that love is a sure thing. It's a sure thing. And you know what? Not many things are a sure thing in this world right now. And, But you know what? If someone loves you unconditionally, then you're going to be all right. And he does. He loves us unconditionally. And if you can grasp that and get it inside you, And understand that he loves you so desperately that he came and died to make sure you would not have to go to hell. That you could come and that you could come and spend eternity with him if you wanted to. But he doesn't force you. He won't force you. Just think what a cool honor to be able to see the key. Face to face. Ah, I'm so excited. I can hardly wait. It, 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 that's just going to be the greatest day of our lives. And it, and it could be, I mean, it could be any minute for all we know. These things are about to blow up in the world's face. And I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't really even touched on the news yet, have I? Well, you know, the will of the king be done. And not mine and nobody else's. His alone. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I give the king the authority he gave me. I hand it right back to him and say, Lord, you know, let my mouth speak your words. Let my brain think your thoughts. Let let me... You know, do the things that you would do and love people, you know. I used to be kind of afraid of people, you know, because, you know, I had some crazy, couple of crazy stalkers that scared me real bad. But, um, you know, we don't have to fear when God is on our side, Okay. We don't have to be afraid of anything. And like I say, I I used to be afraid of people because I just, you know, ran into some crazy ones. But I was was a a pro cheerleader for the NASL Tulsa Roughnecks back in 1981. And that's what I refer to when I say I've had a couple (laughs) crazy couple of crazy stalkers but um that just kind of i i didn't want to be you know i didn't want people to know who i was anymore and i just kind of hid and studied the scriptures for 15 years before god called me to teach and i can't believe he's actually got me back out here in <laughs> Talking to people again. I mean, well, his will be done and not mine. But what I was getting at is that I told the Lord, I said, you know, I'll do whatever you want. You can ask anything of me. But if I'm going to do what you, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to reach out to these lost souls and work this harvest with all my heart, I have to be able to love people like you do, my king. And I ask him to help me, grant me the ability to love people like he loves people. Now, of course, I can't, you know, I'm not capable of loving anyone on the scale that he is, and none of us are. But we can do what he did, you know. The scripture says that if we claim to know him, we should walk as he walked. Tells us that in 1 John. Love people, okay? Care about them because the Lord cares about them. He died for them. So, you know, if you want to please the king and you want to serve the king, 
You care about what he cares about, which is these lost souls. And I ask him to help me love people like he does. And I'm not so afraid of people anymore. You know, I don't fear people anymore now. I see these really big, scary people <laughs> as little children who are just desperately searching for their parent to show them the way. You know what I mean? They're searching for God, but they don't know what they're searching for. They're like little bitty children. And that's how he sees them. And that's how I see them anymore. I don't fear people like I did, you know. <laughs> yes, China and Japan are in a real mess, Michelle. They are. Oh, Paige said she was a cheerleader, too. Well, you know, I I think I kind of needed that kind of background <laughs> to be able to be a cheerleader for the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, because I'm, I'm really passionate for him, and, you know, I'm not a, I, I'm not a timid at all about approaching people and asking them I, i'll talk to I mean, i've talked to people in drive throughs when i when i drive through to get something to eat i talk to them in stores when i'm checking out you know i ask them do you, are you aware that the bible prophecies are coming to pass now and i give them one of my cards so they can find the shows and so and my facebook wall so they can uh have the information and learn because that is we've got to tell people we've got to tell people okay and it has i'm i'm not talking about you know adding viewers to the show i'm talking about reaching people helping them reaching their hearts and actually being of some assistance to them looks like we're going to go to break we'll be back shortly stay tuned
Welcome back. Sorry, I'm sitting here trying to do a little maintenance. I'm just, I'm crying all my makeup off. <laughs> and I can't bear to do that to you guys. <laughs> That's just really, that would just really be scary. <laughs> so, praise the Lord. Well, I Michelle had some questions, I think, didn't she? Let, let me let me go um, see what she had to say. I'm scroll up here. Did I miss it? Try to find it here. Um, David said, I used to be so mad at people for being picked on in school. So for years I feared and hated people. But once I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and gave my life to him, I started to love people and not fear them anymore. Me too, David. Me too. If you're afraid of people, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ask him to rain his spirit upon you. And use you as a vessel to reach out to others. And you will lose your fear of people. You'll start loving them like God does. And you'll you'll come out of your shell, you know. I mean, I've been... <laughs> I, I know nobody's going to believe me, but I'm... You know, there, I, I am... There's a huge part of me that's really shy and reserved and likes to sit and listen rather than talk. <laughs> I like to sit at the feet of the king and hear what he has to say. You know, let's, I know she had a question in here somewhere, unless I'm mistaken. And she, <laughs> let's see. Did I miss it? Well, Michelle, I'm sorry, honey. I can't see, a, I don't see a question. Let's see, Serena, question. How do we know that Islam is the one world religion that will rise? Ah, um, we don't. We don't. I think there's an. I think there's a huge possibility that you're going to see the end of Islam with the harvest of the tares, and that the new one world religion will be godless. It'll focus on man, not a deity. It'll focus on man as a deity. And so I think there's a real possibility, you know, that the one world religion will be man as God, the Antichrist as God, you know. Um, and when Satan enters the body of the Antichrist, he gets rid of, you know, any kind, he'll get rid of the one world religion at that point because he doesn't want to share worship with um, anyone or anything. <laughs> he'll defile the temple. He wants to be God. Well, he doesn't get to be God. He is God's toy devil. And when I say that, that's precisely what I mean. Remember that at the end of the tribulation at the second coming, an angel comes with a great chain in his hand and binds Satan for a thousand years. He's put back in his cage. God doesn't even have to do it himself. He sends an angel to do it. I mean, Satan has no teeth and unless you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then he can eat you alive. But um, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have protection. Okay, and I was going to say that for um, that's what I I meant to add a while ago too when we were talking about um, the animal attacks and you know the things that are coming in during the tribulation the terrible awful things that are coming. Um, if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside you, and so that's God with you inside you he's with you everywhere you go and everything you do and he'll get you through it you'll you'll need to rely on the spirit to get you through the tribulation period if you're still here after the rapture please don't be here don't be here 
and the everything that you love about the world is leaving with us. <laughs> okay? So if you care about your life and you want to live, you want to actually live and not die, then you be ready to be evacuated because you know what this world is dying and a new world is coming and if you want to be alive and be a part of it which don't we all I mean I think we all want to be a part of the world as it continues we don't all want to die and in, in the cataclysm you know the human race is not going to go extinct the Lord is going to preserve us and bring us back. All the children are his reseeding program to reseed the earth and repopulate the earth during that thousand years. And so it's it, receive the Lord as your Savior. Take him seriously. Because the new world that's coming has him on the throne. And things are going to be good. There will be peace. There will be no wars, no sickness, no death, no struggle, no curse, no violence. Hallelujah! And the world will be a wonderful place and we'll never ever die. Glory to the King. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. Um, there's a lot that we still haven't covered in... But you know what? The spirit rules here. And if he diverts somewhere else, that's what we do. And that's what we'll con always continue to do by following his lead. Um, you've got a billboard in Tennessee. You've got a few of them that, and around the country. It says, love your Muslim neighbors. And believers, you have to. That's what the king says to do. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who do evil unto you and despitefully use you. They don't like us, but you know what? We're going to love them because that's what makes us different. If we lash out at them when they lash out at us, we're no different. What makes us different is the love of the Savior. Because everyone wants to be loved. Everyone wants to be blessed. You know? And we... Just have to love one another and be kind to each other and patient with each other and reach out and help each other. We have to care about each other. We've just got to care about each other and help each other through these difficult times. And we'll all get there eventually together. But it takes all of us, you know, to love one another. Just like, you know... Uh, Sherry is always lifting other people, constantly lifting, lifting, lifting other people. And when she's attacked, then we've got to rally around her and lift her so she can stand back up on her feet. Christians are the world's worst at kicking one another when we're down. It's awful. Refuse to, refuse to be like that. Restore and lift each other up. Don't criticize people. Don't judge them. You know, just love them. Love them. We stand on the word. We don't condone sin. But you don't have to condone sin to love people. Okay? I don't have to agree with everything someone does to care about their soul. And neither do you. Find the commonality which is Christ. Christ in us, the hope of salvation. Oh, I love him. You know, I can't even have a conversation with anybody without bringing up the Lord Jesus Christ because he's my life. <laughs> I don't do anything else. As my family, they never even see me because I'm constantly watching for him, spending time with him, hanging out in his word and reaching out to the lost because you know what? We have to have a passion for the lost because the Lord Jesus Christ loves them. He died for them. If you love Jesus, then what's important to him is important to you. Okay? And those, these lost souls are important to him. They're why he came and died. And so they have to be important to us too. That's why I reach out to Muslims who want to kill me and threaten my life. 
I, you know, I'm a, God is in control of my life. The scripture says that no one can have power over me unless it's given to them from above. And if he gives it, great, do me a favor, bring me home. But if he doesn't, nothing's going to happen to me without his permission. And that doesn't mean he won't give it. He might make my day, you know, but I'll just be right back because <laughs> it's about time. You know, he's he's going to come and he's going to bring those disembodied spirits of all of those who have trusted in him and have died for the last 2000 years. He's going to erase their deaths. Oh, death, where is thy victory? Oh, grave, where is thy sting? Well, it doesn't have a sting anymore because the Lord Jesus Christ is going to reverse, erase, eliminate all the deaths of those who have trusted him. That's why he said in John eleven twenty six, those that liveth and believe in me will never die. Those who die and believe in me will live. And those who live and believe in me will never die. John eleven twenty five and 26. He he spells it all out right there. And if you, uh, if you get those two verses inside you and you understand them, it's going to change your life. It's going to change the way you think. Because just because the scripture says we don't grieve like those who have no hope when we lose a loved one to death. Okay? We don't grieve the same way that those who have no hope grieve. We know we'll see them again. We know we'll be alive. We we know that we'll, they'll be alive, we'll be alive, and we'll be able to wrap our arms around them and hug them again. Oh, won't that be something? Um, Michelle was wanting to know, how do we know that Islam is going to be... Oh, well, that's a long time ago. I already did that one. Let's see. How far down does this go? If I missed any more questions... Oh, you guys are so precious. It makes me so proud to see you love one another. There, let's see. Serena, she asks, she says, There are people left on the earth, the trip saints, who are left to reproduce after the 1,000 years. There will be a final war where Satan will gather those who are on the earth, but not for Christ. And Christ will gather those who are for him. Then there will be a final war where Islam and all that are not of Christ will be thrown in to the pit and destroyed, or I think that's right. Well, you're pretty close, pretty close. I mean, um, most of the trip saints are going to die. There is a few, a very small percentage that will remain alive, and the remnant of the Jews, the one-third of Israel that will be protected and preserved um, through these events, probably at Petra, because they flee to the mountains, and that's where you find Petra, there in Jordan. So um, it looks, let's see, the ones, now, the remnant will still be mortally alive. Those are the Jews from Israel that God will protect. Then you've got the the trib saints who came to Jesus after the rapture, and some of them will survive. Not a lot of them, but some of them will. And yes, they will go ahead and live on into the millennium, and those who haven't died as the millennium comes in, then they will they will live to be like almost a thousand years old. They'll, they'll live to be you know, several hundred years old like the patriarchs did back before the flood. See, what's happening is things are reversing, okay? Like with our pole shift and stuff that's happening, what's going on here is that our core of our earth is spinning one direction. Then you have our pole being put pulled in another direction by some kind of force in the universe that is bringing this about. And then you have... Um, the, the earth is slowing down in its rotation as this opposite pull happens, see? And <laughs> it's going to actually stop spinning at some point. 
and then it's going to turn and it's going to spin the other way. Okay? Now, in the movies, that means you go back in time. <laughs> well, a, li a little bit, kind of. I mean, you don't go back in time, but what you do is events start to reverse themselves. Like, when initially at the Tower of Babel, when, when that occurred, the, the Earth... Dry land was all one continent. Pangea is what is the one continent. Well, I mean, if you look at the continents of the Earth, they look like they fit together like puzzle pieces. It's because they were all one at one point. And as this happens and our spinning stops, um, it'll go back. Looks like we're going to go to a break real quick. Hang around. We're not through yet. Glory to God and praise the King of Heaven. We are, are we back? Well, why isn't the, let me turn it off and then turn it back on again see if that helps. Well, I don't know what happened to our picture, but I'm going to, can you hear me in the chat room? Welcome to CUBN. Okay, we lost our connection, but 
looks like we're back. The, um, that was weird when, well, you know, um, <laughs> there was something that I, thank you, thank you guys. I, I appreciate the, you know, I was wondering if you guys could hear me. I, I can't really tell sometimes here, but, um, <laughs> the Grand Ayatollah said that Jesus is an illegitimate child. Well, I thought Jesus was an Islamic prophet, didn't you? <laughs> what are they? They're insulting their own prophet now. Well, I mean, it's like, Jesus is one of their prophets, right? <laughs> Jesus is one of their prophets. And the Grand Ayatollah is insulting one of Islam's prophets, so are they going to behead him? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out why they would defend Muhammad and not Jesus, because Jesus did miracles in front of thousands of people, and Muhammad... He did only one that he was the only witness to it. <laughs> Nobody ever saw him do a miracle, okay? Jesus wrote the whole book, the prophecies. He is the word of God. And did you know that Muhammad never prophesied, not one time? He never prophesied anything. So technically he's not really a prophet, but Jesus is. So if you want to, you know... Precious Muslims, if you want to defend your prophet, look at Jesus, the one who actually performed miracles in the presence of thousands of people and did give prophecies. Muhammad didn't do either one of those things. And so, I mean, does it make sense to defend Muhammad against the rest of the world when there's really no evidence to do so? And then you've got Jesus, who obviously did miracles and um, gave prophecies. So he's, Muhammad's not technically a, even a prophet because he didn't prophesy anything. So, I, well, I know. <laughs> Janine said, they'll kill you, Lisa, just for saying that. I know that. I get death threats all the time. They're usually in person when I get them, except, <laughs> rather than online. I don't get that many online. I usually get them in person, though. You know, I've had people say to me many times, Muslims, if we were in my country, I could kill you where you stand. My standard reply is, well, it's a good thing we're in my country then, isn't it? So, you know, I care about them, and they, they get mad, but I do want them to think. Because the God of Abraham is their God, and, you know, Muhammad deceived them. I don't think he did it purposely, but it happened, and, mm. and I think that uh, he's probably crying out from hell asking, pleading for somebody to tell all his people he's influenced the truth so they don't follow him there. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Scientists launched... 60 tiny fish on a zero-gravity rocket ride from above the Arctic on Monday. They're trying to plumb the secrets of motion sickness. So they've sent these fish into outer space to see what it does to them, I guess. I don't know. Um, oh, this is just, this is so outrageous that I just couldn't hardly believe it. In Spain, a driver who fatally collided with a cyclist is suing the dead youth's family for 20,000 euros for the damage the boy's body did to his luxury car. No wonder this world's about to be destroyed. Uh, can you believe that? That's ridiculous. Um, Pastor Paul Begley was talking about a thousand pound hailstone that fell from the sky in Croatia. Wow. You know, that's one of the vital judgments is huge hail that is so big that it'll just pulverize everything. Um, there is new evidence that suggests dinosaurs were brought to extinction not by a meteor strike, but by insects. 
That's what science is saying. Well, I got news for them. The dinosaurs died in the flood. Okay? We have record of man and dinosaurs being here at the same time in the book of Job. Adam named them behemoths. B-E-H-E-M-O-T-H-S. Behemoths. Or I'm not sure how you pronounce it or how Adam pronounced it. But the dinosaurs died in the flood. They were not chosen to be preserved aboard the ark. But there are still dinosaurs out in the deep oceans, the amphibious ones. We, I saw a, uh, uh, of some pictures that, uh, of a Japanese trawler who brought one in, still had the flesh on it one time. It looked like a Brachiosaurus, except it was a swimmer. It had a long neck, long tail, you know, the four legs um, that were shorter. It, it, it was a dinosaur. And still had the flesh on it. It was so huge, it was bigger than the boat. <laughs> yeah, it, it was huge. You know, but anyway, those who think the dinosaurs died 65 million years ago by a meteor strike, it's bunk. You know, mankind's only been here 6,000 years. And we're given 6,000 years from Adam and Eve. And the point, the whole purpose for them wanting you to believe that all these things happened millions of years ago is because they want you to think that you're not important. See, there's only 6,000 years before the millennium comes and Christ sits on the throne. So there is a very, I mean, when mankind only gets 6,000 years, you've got a very limited number of human beings that are being born during that time, not over millions of years or hundreds of thousands of years. The earth was created just under 6,000 years ago. We're right at about the 6,000 year ago mark when Adam and Eve were created. And that's why it's time for the Lord Jesus Christ to come and sit on the throne for a thousand years. There was a, um, let's see, uh, there was a question. Let me, did I, Thought I saw. Where have I ever seen a Muslim in person? Oh, I run into Muslims in person all the time. Um, actually, <laughs> you know, they own most of the convenience stores that you walk into. You can talk to them every day, everywhere. I mean, years ago, I had a business where I supplied convenience stores with single-dose medications like Tylenol and Motrin and stuff like that as a side business to help my family. And I dealt with Muslims all day, every day. I still do. I still do. When I go into these stores, these guys know me. They, and you know, (laughs) I was never shy about approaching them. They're in my country. They can't just, you know, and like I say, nobody has power over me unless it's given them, given to them from above. So I'm going to proclaim the truth. And I'm going to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am not scared. You know, what they count on is the reason they threaten to kill you, they're not going to. They can't. They can't do a thing to you unless the Lord allows it. And the what they hope to accomplish is fear and intimidation. And I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm just not. I'm standing. I, I mean, I'm proud to be an American. This is my country. And I love my country. And I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And my citizenship in heaven is first in my life. But secondly, I'm an American and I care very deeply about what's happening to our country. I I want to just spread love and hope and peace and joy through the word of God and by his mighty spirit to everyone within the sound of my voice. I just cannot bear the thought of anyone crying out to me from hell saying, why didn't you care about me enough to say something? Why? Have you talked to your friends and neighbors about Jesus Christ? Do you know that those people, if you don't warn them, they're going to cry out to you from hell and ask you why you didn't care about them enough 
to say something. You could, they're going to look at you and say, you could have, you could have saved me from burning in hell for all eternity by just saying something to me and you didn't even care enough to say something. Duh. You know, I mean, that's unforgivable. It truly is. I mean, how we cannot call people our friends, neighbors, family, and neglect to share life-saving information with them. You've got to tell people. You've just got to. Uh, one thing you can do, there's ways, okay? You know, I, I, I don't, it's, it's harder for me to walk up to some of my neighbors than it is total strangers. And so, if you know, write a letter to your neighbors. Copy it. Put it in all, you know, put it on all their doors in your neighborhood. Be the missionary to your neighborhood. Take responsibility as a believer and share the king with those around you. Because you know what? If you don't, and you make it to heaven and they don't, they're going to cry out to you from hell and want to know why you didn't care enough to say something. Because they're going to see it like you personally sent them there. Because you could have stopped them from going to hell by just saying something. Is that really so hard? So what if people get angry or offended or whatever? It doesn't matter. You're giving them life-saving information. They may not want it right then, but you know what? And if they don't want it, back off. But you can write, you know, write letters or whatever. Explain to people the gospel. Give them the scriptures. Tell them, testify. Tell them, I trust him. I believe in him. I believe his words. This is what he said, and stand. Stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given everything for us. There, there is nothing we can ever suffer in this life that is even going to come close to what he did for us. No matter what happens to you, you can be bought, martyred and get your head cut off, and it's not even close to what he did for you. Because being beheaded is painless, quick. Fast. Jesus didn't die painlessly, quickly, or fast. He died very slowly and painfully. And you know what? Being beheaded is way easier than what he, ever, than what he did for us. So, you know, don't go thinking that, you know, <laughs> just because you lay your head on a chopping block, you all that, because... It's nothing compared to what Jesus did for us. He's good. Um, super Typhoon Jellowat. The storm has strengthened. It's, it's a super typhoon. And it. I thought I thought its name was Samba, but it's not. It's Jellowat. J-E-L-A-W-A-T. It's a super typhoon now. And that is going to do some serious damage. And it's headed right over there where this conflict is going on with China and Japan and Taiwan. So things are going to get real interesting in the days to come, everyone. And this NDAA legislation is scary stuff because the minute they have the legal right to indefinitely detain American citizens without charges and without any due process, you're never going to see them again. Because I, I, I just bet you that is the perfect setup for them to, you know, pick people up, say you're going to be indefinitely detained, your family thinks that you're in jail somewhere when you're dead because they take you back where nobody can see once they indefinitely detain you and ask you if you'll convert and worship um, and deny Jesus Christ and convert to Islam or you get your head cut off. So a whole lot of these people that are going to be, in, you know, indefinitely detained are going to be getting their heads cut off and the public's going to be clean. Time to go. 